You sent questions? I have some answers, maybe. Probably mostly BS. Yeah, probably mostly BS. <laughs> it's Q&A day. Kevin's back. So since I started opening these packages and stuff at the beginning of some of these videos, I've had a lot of people ask where they would send me stuff. So I'll post my mailing address in the description of this video. I, I can't promise that I'm going to get everything on video, but uh, yeah, a lot of people want to do it. It's, it's kind of crazy. Thank you for everybody that sent me stuff. So today... This package is from Southern Fin Apparel. So this is literally a packing slip, okay? It, it's not a letter saying, hey Brian, you did really cool stuff, I dig what you do. It's a packing slip and it says, <laughs> one medium performance bass long sleeve shirt. And then two buffs, whichever we have the most of. Two different ones. It's, Southern Finn. Cool shirt! Thank you! The two buffs they had the most of. This one. And this one. Did you, you can seriously drink through a buff. Just FYI. And this is from Andrew Strong in the St. Louis area. I left my knife at home and... Andrew's a young man that was in a tying class that I did at Feathercraft about a year ago, give or take some. Sent you some flies that I tied along with some of my stickers. I also sent you some razor blades to push you to try some more deer hair. He's calling me out. <laughs> you know, the, the funny thing is, as fly fishermen, we don't get weirded out by getting razor blades in the mail. <laughs> Andrew, thank you, my man. These things will catch many a stripers this summer. A couple days ago, to be honest with you, I don't even know what day it is. I put on my story, not my story, Instagram stories, on the Instagrams. Sorry, my lingo is, is probably not there for the social media. I posted something asking you guys four questions. So we're going to kick this thing off. So this comes from Miller Time Flies. This is Braden Miller. If you guys don't know Braden Miller, um, go check him out on the Instagrams. He's a young man that's killing it in the fly fishing world, fly tying world. Braden, keep on keeping on, my man. He asked, how long have I been fly fishing? Along with some other stuff. Well, I, Braden, I've been fly fishing, whoa, 20 years this year. Yeah, I never even thought about that. I. I started fly fishing late in life. I was like somewhere around like 20 when I started fly fishing. I I didn't grow up fly fishing. I um I I grew up as a as a as an athlete, believe it or not. Um and and so you know fishing was uh, not even really on my radar until uh, I got into college and um, I found out that uh, college baseball teams don't want a catcher that completely blew his knee out. And so I'd find something else to do with my time rather than play ball. Uh, so enter fishing and then uh, not long after that at all enter fly fishing. And um, I was ate up. I was ate up quick. I, um, I fished a lot. My first year I kept a journal and um, my first year I, I did something like 260 some odd days that year I fished. Uh, I, just, I, I fished a lot. It was cool I, and I started tying about the same time and yeah, it's all been downhill from there. He also asked my most successful streamer pattern and that's a little bit of a loaded question. Um, I, it, and to be honest with you, in all of these questions that I got, I got a lot of streamer questions and streamer tactics questions and gear questions and stuff like that which 
is going to lead me to something at the end of this video. I'm going to I'm going to give you guys a I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an insight as to what I'm up to for this year. Have something big and kind of cool coming for this year. I, I always have to have a project and and I and I and I've got a big one. So, yeah. Stick around for the end of this video. I will uh, I'll let you know. My most productive streamer pattern has pro it probably has to be the double deceiver, right? I probably have had more fish caught on the double deceiver in my boat um, than any of my flies put together. But you know, that's the one I fished for years. You know, that's that was the easy one. That was easy to tie, and it swam, and um, you know, it wasn't as big a deal if I lost it. Uh, in the last couple of years, the knucklehead has really picked up steam, and um, Montana Fly Company picked it up for next year, for 2021. Uh, we're we're kind of going through the motions of getting that into production right now, um, but yeah, it's uh, double deceiver. I love that fly, and it's and it's and it's still a staple in my fly box. Next question comes from Jack Dot Allen Fly Fishing. How to organize your fly tying materials in a small space? He's going to college, and it, you don't have any room in college. So yeah, when I first started, and before I had. Uh, like a desk and you know stuff that I could put my stuff in and this pegboard that you see behind me the the biggest things that I used were like like Ikea and Walmart and stuff like that have these plastic bins that can roll and they've got drawers and they're really cheap they hold a bunch of stuff I used those I had two of those completely filled up before I ever did anything and how I kept things organized inside of those because they only have like four or five drawers um, I used big Ziploc bags so I would take all my dubbing and put all my dubbing in a Ziploc bag. Zip it up, label it dubbing, and put it in there. I'd put all my packs of saddle hackle into a Ziploc bag and label it and put it in there and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, you can you can get those things. They're double cheap, and I still use Ziploc bags a lot. So, um, yeah, those those little those storage bins, the totes that have drawers, they're cheap plastic. Yeah, get them. The next question is from Jake and Jackson's underscore fishing life. Jake is the dog or Jackson's the dog? Not sure. They ask, when you get to the river, what's the first factor that determines what streamer you go with first? Watercolor, sunny, cloudy, etc. And again, this will have something to do with the announcement at the end of this video. Yeah. I have up to four streamer rods loaded all the time. And if I'm going to be dead honest with you, two of those rods always have something white on them. So. In all seriousness, the first thing that helps me determine what what I'm going to use on any given time when I'm pulling up to the river is what shade of white that I want to throw first. <laughs> no, not really, but kind of. I'm a guy that truly believes that you're really only getting into shades. If it's super dark outside and the water's dark and everything's dark, I'm going dark. If it's super bright, I'm going bright. Um, but when you get into the little intricate details, like when I would use like cotton candy over white or something like that, no, I, I don't. I, it's just something that I dig. If I want to use cotton candy, yeah, I want to use cotton candy. And I catch a lot of flack for this, but one of my go-to colors is Fire Tiger for trout. And, um, I, and I love Fire Tiger, but... Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with it's a confidence color for me. Uh, it gets my attention again. Anything that keeps a streamer fisherman's attention and keeps you engaged and keeps you into it is probably the best fly you can fish. It doesn't matter what color it is or conditions at all. It's probably the best fly you can fish if it's going to keep you engaged. So I got several questions on fly tying tools. And, and I think I'm probably going to end up doing like a top 10 tool video or something like that and really kind of go through them in depth. So if you're moving around, moving around the house, or if you're moving around um, to tie flies in different places, Vitavu gave me one of these. This is their tool pouch. I've said it a million times. I've had a lot of questions about it. This, this thing is a beast. Uh, like I, I might do a review on it. But if I do do a review on it, I think it'll have to involve a firearm. And you think I'm kidding. I have the studio here that I tie a lot of flies in, but then I don't want to only tie flies here in the studio. I, I want to be, 
uh, around the family as well because I tie a bunch of flies. So I travel back and forth with a lot of gear um, to my house and here in the studio and stuff like that. So this thing was a game changer for me. It holds tons of tools. It'll actually hold more, more tools than it looks like it does right now. And it folds down this thin. But, you know, the very first thing is obviously a bobbin. You have to have a bobbin. That's all there is to it. Multiple bobbins are nice. Uh, you don't have to have more than one bobbin. Scissors. Good scissors. I remember I started off using like these little like horrible thread scissors for like knitting or something. I don't even know what they were for, but they were horrible. They, they wouldn't even cut thread. Um, so a good pair of scissors is one of the best things you can get. I'm a little torn on this one because I feel like everybody should learn it the hard way. But a whip finish tool. Yeah, they're great. They're really nice. Uh, this one from Loon has a, has a little cutter on the bottom. It'll cut your thread. Um, but I feel like everybody should learn how to do this by hand as well. I really do. And a bodkin. We call it a bodkin, but it's a needle with a handle. You'll use these way more than what you think you will. Yeah, you can clean eyes with them if you're tying big streamers or something or anything. And you have an eye that you get, you get a little crowded. You can stick it up through the eye and then heat it up with a lighter and pull it through the eye and it'll like clean the eye out immediately. Um, you can pick different things out. Bodkins are irreplaceable. And hackle pliers. I'm not talking about using the hackle pliers quite so much as to just to help you wind it, but I got so frustrated whenever I was winding hackle, when I was holding it with my hand, when you drop it, it just unwinds and you have to completely start over again. If you drop it with these, they have just enough, they have just enough weight that you, you drop it and it drops back into the same spot. It holds it. It doesn't let it unwind. I think this is going pretty good so far. Justin laughing. Justin asks, how did you get into guiding and what kind of tips would you give? Oh boy, I actually fell into guiding. I, it wasn't something that I was looking to do. Um, it, it, it was it, it was just something that kind of fell in my lap. And, and to be honest with you, um, if it weren't for guiding, I really don't think I would have gotten as much into the video stuff or anything like I'm doing now. When I was really, really hitting it hard as a guide, I was lucky enough to do a lot of filming. I was a part of, you know, two or three TV shows and, and stuff like that and filmed a lot. Uh, filmed with the Outdoor Channel, filmed with Sportsman's Channel, um, and, and stuff like that. So I was, I was around it a lot and it was intriguing and, and it was neat. And, and part of that time was in those days when they had the big, huge cameras on their shoulder and, and stuff like that. Fun fact, one day when I was filming, the camera crew who I had filmed with like two or three times at this point, uh, put a brand new wireless lav mic on me. And jokingly, he says, no, don't wade too deep and fry this thing. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Whenever there's a fish on and it's a good fish, I'll tend to jump out of the boat to net the fish. Yeah, uh, jumped out of the boat, netted the fish, and, and it was a good fish, and we were like, yeah! And uh, about that time, the camera boat was across the river from me. The guys were like, oh, they pulled their headphones off, and I had totally fried the, the mic, and they could hear it, and it just went off in their ears, and yeah, that was like a $600 mic that I fried just by jumping in, and, it, I, I, and I think it was on me for an hour. <laughs> the next question is from Harmon underscore 95. He asks, how has this current pandemic affected your guiding, and how are you making it through? Um, Harmon, I'm actually really, really lucky. I'm independently wealthy. And, <laughs> sorry, no, I'm not. It's really kind of funny. I was just talking to Steve Daly. Uh, Steve is a good buddy of mine. But Steve and I were talking about this pandemic and, and how um, it's helped us maybe be a little bit more creative and start some projects that we have been putting off and stuff like that. Which leads me to letting you guys know my next project. I've had so many people request 
for a Streamer Chronicles to be on me. And and it just, it always seemed weird, it seemed funky. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of a different spin on this. I'm gonna start a new series. I, I'm gonna call it Streamer Tactics. We're gonna cover everything from gear to knots, lines, leaders, tippet, everything you can think of when it comes to streamer fishing. There'll be in episodes like I tend to do. I tend to do episodic, is that a word? Episodic? Is episodic a word? Containing or consisting of a series of loosely connected parts or events. I, I tend to work in episodes. So uh, some of these episodes will be real short. Some of them will be pretty long. It, it's gonna kind of be a full season worth of how-tos and uh, just just different things. It's it's gonna be a big undertaking. Yeah, we're doing it. I'm gonna start filming this weekend. Part of it will be here in the studio. It's something I'm really looking forward to and I put off for a year because I wasn't sure I could pull it off in the way I wanna pull it off and I'm still not sure I can. But it's something I'm really looking forward to. It's, it's, a, it's a big thing and um, I'm putting it out there right now, and I can't take it back because I know you guys won't let me. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for helping these tying tips videos really kind of blow up. Uh, I didn't, I didn't see this being a big thing at all. I, I didn't think these things would be worth anything but uh but you guys are liking them and and i thank you very much i appreciate it as always leave a comment below if there's a tying tip or something you'd like me to cover if there's a certain part of streamer fishing that you would like me to cover in the the streamer tactics videos leave a comment let me know what that is other than that i think we're done